Well, you know, it's the science base. I mean, let's talk the science of heart disease reversal. That's you know, a lot versus zero. There's, you know, really, literally, other than uh, plant-based, uh, no-added oil diets, there's zero other data for dietary reversal. A dramatic statement that you can reverse heart disease. It's crazy. It got me excited 26 years ago when that data started to come out. Uh, and now I'm a student and a, certainly a teacher of it. Um, so the science, uh, show me any other diet that can affect your telomeres in a way that suggests you're anti-aging by changing your diet. It's total versus zero data. And I think we can say the same for cancer. I mean, show me any other diet. And I'd go to the prostate cancer data. Um, I'm willing to listen. Just show me some long-term data that anything other than immersing yourself in whole food plant-based uh, diet, not moderate, go for it. Mm-hmm. Leap in. Don't put your toe in the water. Dive uh, can reverse disease. So, I mean, that's what we should base it on, not emotion. Um, there's a scan of the heart called the heart calcium CT scan. Dr. Ted Barnett, famous preventive doctor of Rochester, is a radiologist, and he knows that maybe at his hospital for $100, I'm not sure, maybe it's 120 you can spend one minute getting a CAT scan of your heart arteries. No iodine, no injection, very low dose exposure to radiation. And you can find out at age 40, 45, 48, whether you're riding your bike with a load of diseased arteries or not. Now, um, and that's early detection, is to find out the status of your arteries, find out your, your advanced cholesterol level, your lipoprotein A, your inflammatory markers. These are covered by insurance. You're just going to find a doctor that has, and they're not, it's not difficult. Your local hospital runs this CAT scan of the heart, coronary artery calcium scan, does these lab tests. Um, I have several articles on the web in the last two weeks on how to not end up dead in an emergency room. Uh, because I think it is a preventable problem. Um, you mentioned, I'm going to skip a few questions here, because you were just mentioning preventing uh, heart attacks with you know, the routine blood work. You said on page six, routine blood work often does little to uncover heart disease. And I'm thinking like, oh, your LDLs and your HDLs and your cholesterol. Can you explain why that does yeah. little to uncover heart disease? Well, it's perfectly great to start with what you'd call the routine cholesterol panel. You just mentioned total cholesterol, LDL, HDL, triglyceride. I mean, uh, it, you, we used to say one in 500. Now the number is one in 250 have a genetic uh, disorder called familial hyperlipidemia, or FH. If you Google FH, uh, you'll read about it. And your cholesterol may be 450, and you're, way, you know, you're thin, and you feel great. It's totally on a genetic basis. You can eat all the Brussels sprouts you want. Your cholesterol is going to be over 400. A routine panel at age 17, 18, 14, 22 will pick that up. So everybody should at least have one routine panel sometime before age 20. And the pediatrics group are doing a better, better job at that because it's a treatable condition. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't change your genes yet, but that will be coming down the road. But we can treat you with many advanced therapies to lower your cholesterol. And I participate in one of the largest studies. Lowering cholesterol as a child, if it's super high, makes an unbelievable lifelong difference um, as opposed to waiting to later in life. You get it done early. But you can, I can show you two people that both look pretty healthy, and their cholesterol is 220, and their LDL is 130, and then there's something called an advanced lipid profile, and fancy words, your particle size, your particle number, your small, dense LDL number, and you can see two completely different people when you do the advanced lab. One is pre-diabetic pattern at much more risk than the other. Now, cholesterol always matter. It's always more risk to be 300 than to be 140, but... Uh, in that 220 middle range, you can really separate people out, plus these other measures, um, C-reactive protein, homocysteine, lipoprotein A. Know your blood sugar very carefully. There's so many pre-diabetics uh, walking around uh, as that waistline gets to 36, 38, 40, 42. Mm-hmm. You can be pretty sure your blood sugar is not under good control. So you mentioned before, I want you to get into more detail with, with high sensitivity C-reactive protein, and is that um, something that, that doctors should really be looking at? Um, yes, and I'd say in the last, so actually you can go back 150 plus years, pathologic data, um, I want to say Dr. Verkow, and I think I got that right, showed that when you looked at arteries that were in autopsies, you not only saw cholesterol and calcium and scar tissue, what we call plaque, but we saw inflammation. You could see white blood cells. You could see little cells called platelets. So there has been longstanding data that how can somebody walk around with heart disease for 20 years but 
yell at their wife or go out and do a CrossFit gym for a woman or whatever it is and have a heart attack all of a sudden. What's that conversion? Mm -hmm. And we still don't completely understand what that conversion is, but inflammation, uh, the redness, soreness, pain, and swelling you get with a splinter occurs in our arteries. And we now know that there are chemicals in the bloodstream that are markers of your arteries being on fire, your arteries being inflamed. The most famous and the one we've used the longest is called HSCRP, high sensitivity C-reactive protein. You can get it done in any hospital, any lab, not very expensive at all. Um, it shouldn't go up from your gout or your knee arthritis. It should go up if your arteries are inflamed. Now it's not perfect, but that's the concept. And now we've got many more than that. The Cleveland Clinic has one called myeloperoxidase, MPO. I do it on my patients. It's supposed to be only when white cells are in blood vessels causing inflammation. Um, there's another one called LPPLA2 or plaque test, another one. So I do these biomarkers, as they're called. I feel much better if my patients, even if I know they have vascular disease, if their inflammatory markers are normal, they're much less likely to have that conversion to a stroke or heart attack and vice versa. Now, the plant-based diet is naturally anti-inflammatory. Sugar's inflammatory. Plant-based diet is naturally low in sugar. Saturated fat can be inflammatory. Animal products raise your C-reactive protein. We don't talk much about uh, meat-based diets being inflammatory, but the data says they are. And when you substitute plants, it becomes anti-inflammatory. So that's why people with arthritis, people with um, Crohn's and other diseases can sometimes make great strides. Uh, for a variety of reasons, but eliminating everything that poops, the animal world. <laughs> Great. Then you talk about, let's get to really root cause. So there's many studies that say if you'll do six things, you can drop your risk of heart attack by 85%. And real quickly, number one, don't smoke. We all get that. And the hard, uh, smoking rates are lowest they've ever been in the United States in the last uh, 56 years. Number two, you want to... Um, uh, sleep seven hours a night. That's a new one on the research list, but the importance of sleep to overcome the stress and the adrenal fatigue, athletes, super important to get your adequate sleep. Number three is keep yourself thin, uh, waist under 40 inches for a guy, under 35 for a woman. Now that's not even that difficult. You can go thinner than that, but that matters. Number four is, um, uh, I am blanking on, but it is actually to eat more than five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. It's easy to say it's about 3% of Americans eat more than five servings of fruit and vegetables a day. That wasn't vegan research. That was heart attack prevention, nutritional research, more than five servings. So there's got to be berries in your breakfast. There's got to be lettuce on your sandwich. There's got to be broccoli next to your tempeh. There's got to be vegetables, 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 and fruit. Whole fruits are perfectly fine. In fact, some studies say Americans are deficient in whole fruit, fruit even more than they are in vegetables. And the last one's a fun one, which is enjoy some alcohol during the week responsibly and not in excess. Hmm. Again, I don't own a, dist uh, a beer brewery, but um, it is a science. And uh, sure, red wine is probably a bit better, but in these studies, even hard liquor and beer. So once in a while, uh, you know, it's, it's been found in the Mediterranean diet. It's been found in these other studies. Hmm. Uh, I, I did miss the sixth one, which is walking 30 to 40 minutes a day. More if you want to. You go bike a century ride if you want to. But um, those six tips reduce heart attacks by 85%.